Hey folks, I got some requests the last week, two weeks. Um, people said uh, they wanted to see how to clean a sturgeon, and I'm no pro at it, but I get my own done. So my wife's going to take the phone here, and uh, well, we only got a few more minutes of daylight, but uh, we'll go ahead and show you what I do. I mean, if it'll be a help to you. So. I'm going to hand you all off to Fish Lay and Wife right here. Just drug her out of the house. And uh, and we're going to see if we can uh, help you out a little bit. So with sturgeon, your knife's got to be sharp. Um, a fish to start. Now... A lot of you guys, I don't, you know, a lot of people, actually, I guess, are new to sturgeon fishing. You got to tag your fish. You got to tag your fish, and that tag's got to stay stay with that fish until you're doing what I'm doing now. Um, it's been on ice. I went and got 60 pounds of ice for it last night. It's been in the bathtub. So this is the tag. It's been filled out correctly, and you have to keep these just in case you get uh, rolled up on by fish and game. And I would never uh, accuse fish and game of trying to make life hard on us, but I do hope that they will go ahead and make sure that they uh, defend the laws and make sure we're abiding by the laws. So the first thing when I start, the first thing I do is I got to get rid of this. These will cut you. And I mean, I've had slices on legs and arms and everything, but, uh, I start right here. I go right under this dorsal. And then I just come up to the head. Just want to go right because these things are bone. They're sharp and they're uh, they're knife killers. You come right up to the head. And you take that one off and then that gives you that you don't lose you lose very little meat and I just kind of keep putting stuff in the bucket as I go along but I want this slice right here to go all the way to the tail so now what we've got here take this one a little bit deeper So then after you do that, there's a couple more things you got to do. I flip them over on your side. Can't thank Tommy Hall enough for bringing me this fish last night. And he said, hey, since you got nothing to do but fish, why don't you tag me a dino? And he did. And so now I'm, I'm about to fillet it up and I'm going to barbecue some up. I'm going to take it over to Tommy so he can see what he's been missing. But this is my newest. This is a 9-inch or a 10-inch heavy-duty stiff fillet knife that I got from Tim over at Elkhorn Outdoor Sports. And you just take and go like this. And you take those diamonds off. So once you put... The fillet on the table now you don't have anything messing with your blade while you're trying to go ahead and fillet the skin off separate it from the meat now you've got a line here too but i pretty much go above this so i don't usually do anything with the belly meat and this sucker is sharp let me tell you Kind of tired, worked all day, had a busy day. We had to run two-man auto most of the day, so kind of worked my butt off. So I thought about getting some more ice and doing this tomorrow, but uh, my I promised my wife we'd go to a co-workers of hers going away or new, to a new job dinner tomorrow. So we're doing it tonight. So now you go ahead and you flip it over. 
and it it's really good if you got a table you can also put your tailgate down and put a piece of plywood on it but you want a flat solid surface that you can clean your fish on but with a sharp knife you can go right along the side here and you can take them diamonds out hence diamond getters the sturgeon is full of diamonds they'll cut you to pieces and they can make filet and skinning the uh, the meat a very difficult uh, deal. So once I've got that done, because I'm going to cut all the way up to here, I try to waste as little meat as possible. You know, and uh, last year we didn't even uh, we didn't even tag out because I don't keep females, and uh, it just so happened that the ones we were catching. Oh, <laughs> the ones we were catching were too big and we had to let them go anyway. And plus all the females were pretty much big. So now we're going to go ahead and turn him back up, set him up vertical. We're going to use my ceramic knife and we're going to go ahead and uh, We're going to go right down by the, the, the center. And with a sharp knife, it allows you to come right up through there. And I'm almost down to the spine now. So you just real slow, take your time, because you can just about go straight down all the way back here. You, you want to try not to cut the... Uh, the spinal cord. You just want to try to keep that all enclosed. Then just slowly work your way down here. And I can feel I'm dragging the table already, so I'm already right there. And like I said, I take it all the way back. Now, a lot of sturgeon meat, the muscle looks like actual red meat off, off a mammal more than it does a fish. But now I'm coming up to the rib cage and I'll take it down and over and across each rib and then when you get right in here you want to take it cut it down as close as you can to the gill plate now this gill plate this is they don't have bones inside the gill plate you'll break your hand if you smack it I tell you it uh, but I bring that down here and then that allows me the freedom to trim some more right here and just follow the rib cage there are you there there is a way you can do this and you can take the spinal cord out and you can just cut it up into but i prefer not to have the ribs in the meat at all So it's, it's just like filleting any other fish, just a lot bigger, sometimes a little hard to handle. And once you get down to a certain point down the ribs, you can go ahead and just cut the skin, lay it over, and finish filleting it back up. I, it, uh, sorry we can't do a better job of showing you everything I'm doing, but... I'm limited on battery on my phone and I'm limited on daylight, so I really got to kind of get moving. Because I don't have any lights set up out here. making good headway here and then like I said you just follow the ribs around and I've got this cut down here all the way anyway and at this point once I've got I've separated the actual cut of the the meat coming down I'm pretty much where it uh, we're into belly meat and I can go ahead and start uh, 
slicing the uh, the skin. So I just grab it like this, and then I bring this up, and I follow the line of the rib cage. And I got to try to make sure I get up around that pin there, back by its butthole. So now, at this point, I can go ahead and let the knife penetrate all the way through the skin at the tail. And then I can bring the cut forward. And that leaves me with this whole side fillet. I just have to take this, uh, cut this fin off, and then I'm ready to go ahead and put it skin side down. And then I'll show you, if, uh, if the lighting permits, how to separate that. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, move over here. And I'll go ahead and take this skin off back to there. And then I'm going to go ahead and come. I think you'll be able to see a little bit of what I'm doing here. And once again, we're doing the same thing on this side. Just bring it right up the center here. Really sharp blade. Every time I clean a fish, I go ahead and I've got a thing, a little red thing that's got uh, two sharpening rods that come at each other. And I just run it about five or six times over there. And that gives me a really sharp knife to work with. <laughs> Now, like I said, this is the way I do it. This is the way I I watched a couple of YouTube videos. And then over a few fish, I kind of got my system down. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you, everybody. Once you figure out the basics of it, then you kind of just got to get your niche. Um, to Getting through this part is actually less water, the better. bringing this back down now along the spine just like I did on this side and then you have to kind of start filleting down around the rib cage Okay, and then once again, once I got it up here, that is, that's as far as you can go. That's hard bone right there. I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it, it's tough and it, uh, it's a blade killer. So you don't want to dig into it too much. Otherwise, you got to stop, wash your hands, go in, sharpen your blades again. All right, so now we're going to get up here get our blade tip in there and then you can feel the bone if you get too far on top of it and then you just got to adjust the angle of your blade and then keep coming down but you want to pull it away and then keep trimming And like I said, I don't like I don't like wasting any good meat. These these fish are so majestic and they're so beautiful, and they taste so good. But uh, I respect that, and uh, I wanna I wanna make sure I get everything out of this fish that uh, 
that it deserves. And it, they, even in death and cleaning, preparing to eat, they deserve to be treated with a lot of respect. And uh, it's my favorite of all fish to catch. So now that's, I just cut that loose so it'll fall by the wayside. See, so now it opens up. And I'm sure this time next year I'll probably have another knife, maybe. But this is what I've got now. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that around. But as you can see, I've pretty much got this whole side fillet go around that dorsal or whatever it is, pectoral, whatever they want to call it. I don't know the anatomy so much. I just know I love catching dinos. And my fish laying wife here, she does it with me. Ah. All right, so just got a little bit more to go here. All right, I take that cut back as far as I can so I can get a good start. Now, at this point, and this is a male, um, I, uh, some people say, how do you see? I can tell by the color, the brilliance of the color. I haven't missed yet. Now, I have missed on some stripers, been pretty upset with myself, but this is a male, and uh once again, thank you, Tommy Hall. Sure appreciate you bringing me a fish. And uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut this away. <laughs> that cartilage at times is as hard as bone. So as I'm doing this, I go ahead and cut everything up. So I can put it in the bucket as I'm going along. Boy, I tell you what, man, that sure is some fat meat. You want to have to do some more. Filleting, I think, on this one because it's a lot fatter than the last 51 inch. But as you can see, down around the spine, around the rib cage, and it doesn't hardly leave any meat. Big old liver and big old heart, man. I tell you what, just a, just a beautiful, majestic creature, really. But I sure like eating them. I love catching them. And I love releasing them. And uh, we do our best to make sure we're very kind to them. Keep them out of the water as little as possible when we have to bring them in the boat. And get them back to their grounds so they can uh, continue on. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to inspect it. And so the fins are gone, and I've got uh, a pretty smooth, I got all the uh, diamonds out of here. I don't, yeah, I have to look up, I have my wife look up and see what they're called so I can uh, talk correctly when trying to uh, explain things to you. So... This right here, we're just going to cut this off right here. All right, and then we want to take this one off so it doesn't get in our way when we're skinning it. Like I 
said, you'll have to just bear with me. I've had a long day at work. I'm kind of tired, so doing the best I can here. So at this point, you want your fillet to be as close to the edge of your cutting surface as you can get it. See, as you can see, I've got something to hold right here. Because you need to put have tension on it while you're trying to slide the knife between the skin and the meat as you're separating it. Now, as I come across, at some point I will allow the blade to ride up about an eighth of an inch, sometimes a quarter of an inch. To so I can separate the dark meat as best I can on the outside between the skin and the meat while I'm out here instead of having to go in the house and do it after I've got done filleting it up. And I need a little grip here. All right, so if you don't have good grip, it's real easy for your hand to slip, and you don't want to cut yourself. And then you got to go in and do shit like I do, grab some needle and thread, and go get a bottle of Jack and stitch yourself back up. And I've done that too many times to, to want to even have to do that again. Besides, I got good Kaiser coverage. All right, so like I said, you come back here and you get in here as far as you can and you cut on down and you hold this so it's got tension on the skin and then you just kind of start working your way down and you can feel you can feel see I'm just just leaving the dark meat I don't know if you can see that but this is just barely losing any of the white meat. I'm kind of leaving the dark meat here. And believe it or not, I got people that I take the rest of the fish that I don't use to, and they cook up the whole thing. So none of this fish is going to get wasted. So you want to press down. You want to pull. And... Sometimes you need to put your hand right above where the blade is, so you want to be careful not to cut yourself. Don't try to get in a hurry. It takes however long it takes. Every once in a while, you want to just check. See, that's real good. I'm doing a pretty good job. Now I'm going to pull it a little farther this way because this table's broken. I borrowed this table from work to do the heads on my truck, but right now it's a fish cleaning table. I'll just have to clean it up real good before I take it back. And like I said, just if you feel something weird, like right there, you can see I messed up. There's a little dip in the table here. And so now I need to bring this down in line. With the rest of it so now i got a lip here so i can go ahead and stick that blade back in there and lay it down and then bring this back up like this wow not bad Okay, so are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here's my first fillet. And you can see, 
as I got to the front. I'm going to have to trim this once I get in the house. But that's a one side. That's a side of sturgeon right there. And uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, fold that back out of the way. And then I'm going to just take and uh, come up about six inch. Six inch steaks, and then if I'm barbecuing, I'll go ahead and make like a three quarter to one inch chops out of them, season them both, and then I'll put them on a nice hot grill. But uh, until you've had good barbecued sturgeon, you ain't living. And for those of you thinking maybe I'd like to go sturgeon fishing. What do you think we spent last year, so far this year, on sturgeon fishing, babe? Mm -hmm. Three, four thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not even done fishing yet. We've already spent probably four grand, not to mention a pole that I got to replace. But I found out that Forrest Mackey, a stubborn rod, with the coercion of P. Diddy Dino, had that all set up. So no fault of my own, for sure. I love you, Forrest. Um, but like I said, we're losing the light. Um, so I'm going to hurry up and get this other one finished up so I can wash this table off and get this stuff bagged up, ready to transport to somebody I'm taking it to. But uh, best, well, I'm not going to say best because I love me some black bass. Some largemouth bass and crappie, I think, is pretty hard to beat. But so is sturgeon. So, hey, you too can be like me and my fish laying wife, Jennifer. Gone fishing, baby. Go and eat you some.